I'm down here on the pre-grid and I have to say it's a glorious day here at Virginia International Raceway. The track is fantastic if you've not seen it and these boys are going to put on a show. This Formula 4 championship in 2021 has been about literally two sides of the other side of North America and I'm talking Mexico and Canada. Noel Leone from Monterey, Mexico has been flying all season long and once again this man in the number 19 car is pole position. Alongside him, same story, Canada, Canada's Nico Christodoulou. So like I said, Mexico and Canada have dominated. Nico, how do you feel about today? What's the plan? Uh, I feel pretty good. Uh, we're a little fast. Ended up getting held up uh, on my lap in qualifying. so. We still have a lot to uncover and uh, a lot of speed to attack Leon in the race. So basically, in your language, you're going to send it? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You got it. So, Nico Christodoulou from, uh, from Canada lines up. Now, America are coming, though. Don't think that it's just a Mexico versus Canada. No, the Americans are here, and Jason Alder has been flying all season. He's had some fantastic runs. Jason, how about today? How do you feel? Oh, I'm feeling really confident. You know, we had a really good qualifying effort, and me and Nico being up in the front together, I think we're going to bring some good points home for VRD. VRD. Well, points. We want wins. Oh, of course we do, but we got to get those points too. How do you feel about the championship? We're getting close to the end. I'm feeling confident. I think we can make it happen. All right, making it happen for Jason Alder. Watch out for him, one of the Americans coming up. Next on the grid, another Canadian, Justin Arsenault. He's had a great uh, uh, season as well. So like I said, Mexico, Canada versus America. The next man down is one I want to talk to, Christian Weir, coming into the championship, number 31. First practice, I went, who is this kid? Well, we're going to find out. Christian, I know you've been doing some F4, um, but welcome to the championship. How do you feel? Thank you. I feel great. I mean, great qualifying. Car was great. Uh, I couldn't complain. How old are you now? I just turned 14. Yesterday. That's insane. You got special dispensation, I know, on the road to Indy, but you are definitely looking to make it, right? Oh, yeah. All right. Well, watch out for the number 31. He's definitely got some work to do. Alongside him is Foley in the number four. Then comes the number 26 for Matt Clark. He had a great run last time out. Matt Clark is another guy who you should keep an eye on. Then it's the number five, Christensen, also had a good run. Time out at Watkins Glen. Final guy I want to talk about is from Texas. Chase Gardner came into the championship late, but he puts up his fingers and says he's going. Are you ready? Yes, sir, man. I'm doing it. I'm ready. Go get him. Chase Gardner for Texas in the number 33. Those are the guys to watch out for in our first race for F4 here at VIR. I'm going to hand it over to my man, John Fippin. Thanks, Johnny. Great to hear from you down on the grid as we're getting ready to send these 26 drivers out for their formation lap behind the Honda Civic Type R safety car. As these uh, drivers getting ready for their first race of the weekend, there'll be three of them. And this is race number one, round 13 for our season, as this our penultimate venue for the 2021 season of the F4 US Championship powered by Honda. My name is John Fippen, so happy to be here with you along with Johnny and uh, we hope to have a guest commentator in the booth a little later on as well. The cars are lined up on the grid. We're just getting the countdown from race control that these drivers will be uh, heading out momentarily. In fact, we're hearing that the one minute warning is being given to the grid which indicates that these, uh, the safety car will head out on track and take them around for the Formula One style standing start. Great shot of the grid now, as you can see the one minute board being given. All of these Honda power plants coming to life as the crew members making final adjustments, bidding their drivers goodwill, and then getting ready to send them out behind the safety car for the formation lap. For those of you unfamiliar with the F4 championship, we welcome you to it. Uh, this has been going on since 2016 here in the US. Uh, we've uh, built our fields up to uh, just shy of 30 cars at most of our venues. We're looking forward to our final venue as we will be in support of the U.S. Grand Prix at the Circuit of Americas in about uh, a month's time. And uh, we'll have two final races there to crown the champion of the 2021 championship. As Johnny mentioned, Noel Leone, the points leader, only has an eight-point lead over Matt Clark, who's running second in the points right now. Nico Christodoulou, who will start with Leone on that front row, 
is third in the points, a further 25 back. This championship is still wide open with 125 points still on offer. Technically, there are 15 drivers who could still uh, come through on the championship. Of course, they would need a whole lot of help from the drivers in front of them. But nonetheless, Noel Leon, Matt Clark, and Nico Christodoulou, along with Jason Alder and Matt Christensen, are five drivers to keep an eye on as this championship gets down to the final five rounds. Should be moments away from rolling the cars away, and then we'll introduce the 26 car starting grid to you. And there they come. As you can see, the 19 of Noel Leon rolling out of the false grid. Let's introduce the drivers and we'll go from back to front. Starting in the, uh, the 13th row is the number 39 of Bryson Morris out of Mount Juliet, Tennessee. Bryson drives for Crosslink Kiwi Motorsport. Unfortunately, he was uh, penalized because he uh, caused a red flag situation during our qualifying session. And so he will have to start at the back. He is a, the winner of our most recent round at Brainerd. He'll be fun to watch coming up through the field. Chloe Chambers serving a carryover penalty from our round at Brainerd. will be starting from the pit lane in the number eight car for Future Star Racing. Kaeron Lee on debut with us this weekend in the number nine car out of Boston, Massachusetts for Jensen Global Advisors. Another debutante is the number 18 of Maxwell Jameson out of Houston, Texas for D-Force Racing. Next to him, or should I say forward into row 11 on the outside, the 28 of Will Edwards from Greenwood, Indiana, and Alliance Racing. Great to have Will back. Hayden Bowlesby in the 0-3 for Velocity Racing Development will start alongside him. In row 10, car number 17, Jose Andres Martinez from Monterrey, Mexico. Jose drives for the D-Force Racing Team. He has requested to start from the pit lane, so Jose will be behind Chloe Chambers uh, in, or just in front of Chloe Chambers, and will be released after the field accelerates away. Next to him is the number one of Oscar Hafar out of Mamaroneck, New York, for Jensen Global Advisors. In row number nine, the 23 of Artie Flores out of Leon, Mexico, for Ganella Racing. Next to him, welcome back to Eric Evans, who raced with us a year ago in the 29 car out of Jones Creek, Georgia, for Velocity Racing Development. This is Eric's first start of the 2021 season. Emily Lynn Scott, the other recipient of the PMH Power and Diversity Scholarship from Langdon Hills, Essex, Great Britain. She drives for Crosslink Kiwi Motorsport. Alongside her, the number two of Jake Bonilla from San Antonio, Texas, driving for Jensen Global Advisors. In row seven, the 25 car is Joseph Dinelli. He'll be commentating with us a little later in the weekend from Long Beach, California. And Joseph drives for the Crosslink Kiwi Motorsport team. Next to him, his teammate, the 66 of Ryan Sheehan out of Horseshoe Bay, Texas. In row number six, yet another Crosslink Kiwi driver, Gabriel Fonseca out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Gabriel in the 76 car will start in row six. Next to him, the 98 of Lucas St. John, one of our Canadian drivers for the new iCar Canada racing team. He's out of Lorraine, Quebec. Now for the top 10, starting in 10th position, car number 20, Victor Anderson out of Linköping, Sweden for Crosslink Kiwi Motorsport. Next to him, another Crosslink Kiwi driver, the 33 of Chase Gardner, also out of Prosper, Texas. Now the man who is fifth in the points, he will start ninth, excuse me, eighth, that is car number five, Matt Christensen out of Orlando, Florida for Jay Howard Driver Development. The man who is second in the points didn't have the qualifying performance he was looking for. That's the 26 of Matt Clark from Campbellville, Canada. He races for Godella Racing. Look for Matt to move up as quickly as he can. Seth Foley with a fantastic qualifying performance, one of his best of the year in the number four car will start sixth. He drives for J. Howard Driver Development out of Elkridge, Maryland. The top placed rookie in the series, Johnny talked to him on the grid, the 31 of Christian Weir out of Naperville, Illinois for turn three motorsport and Ganella Racing. He'll be fun to watch if this is his first start in the national series. Now for the front two rows, the number 36, Justin Arsenault from Marin Heights, Quebec, the other driver from the iCar Canada Racing team. In third, the man who is fourth in the points, the 77 of Jason Alder. Jason out of Cookville, Maryland for Velocity Racing Development. Now for the front two rows, we have car number three, 
or card number 22, excuse me, the third place uh, standing in the points is Nico Christodoulou out of Maple, Ontario, Canada for Velocity Racing Development and our pole sitter and the points leader is Noel Leon, car number 19 from Monterey, Mexico for T-Force Racing. I'd like to welcome like to welcome our guest commentator from Newman Walks Racing once again. Great to have you back with us. Great job. Thank you so much, John. Uh, glad to be here back in the booth with you guys. Um, excited to watch another race here um, and be able to commentate alongside with you. Appreciate your being here and uh, taking some time out. We understand that uh, you'll be in the F4, the FR ch uh, championship race coming up uh, next. And it looks like we are going to go around one more time uh, just to turn our attention back to the track, I saw that the nine car of Cameron Lee spun on the formation lap, and they're going to need to get that car out of harm's way, so they decided to go around for one more formation lap. Jonathan Green making his way into the seat, and he is joining us. Johnny? How are you? I'm well, sir. Thank you for the grid walk. It's great to have you with us. Jordan Messick joining us here. Delighted as always. Yep. Jordan, uh, one of our best expert commentators. We're always glad to have him in the booth. Yeah, and Jordan, I would have argued that this is one of the tracks that the drivers really loved. It just, I've never driven it, but it just looks like so much fun. Absolutely, yes. This track is very flowy, very fast. Um, as you can see, going up the S's, it just kind of gives you an exhilarating feeling going to the S's, knowing that you're going flat out, not having to lift. Um, I was here, fortunately enough, in a different car earlier this year back, um, and it was a totally different driving style. You know, going through the S's, you get to the top of the S's, you have to lift. So being back in the Formula Regionals car and actually having to go through the S's basically flat out, not worrying about having to lift, was definitely an exhilarating feeling, and I was happy to be par part of it. Exactly. You've got the extra downforce, obviously, of the F4 car, which uh, gives you that advantage. And of course, in the Formula Regional car, as you said, even more downforce. It's really great to have that opportunity to, to go through that. That section of the racetrack, every driver to a man and woman says it's their favorite part of this Absolutely. Racetrack. I mean, you feel like a superhero going today. You feel like a Formula 1 driver because you're going through that corner and you don't have to worry about lifting. And you're just like, this car is, you don't think it's going to hold when you're going up there. <laughs> then you get to the top and you're like, Holy crap, it's holding. How? <laughs> Is that technical term? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> exactly. You say exactly. something else in the helmet, but I'm yeah, not yeah, going to yeah. say it here. Yeah. That leads into the, uh, to the iconic oak tree bend. Uh, did you ever race here when the oak tree was actually present? Unfortunately, I did not have the joy to uh, race here when the oak tree was here, but I, I wish I did. You know, it, I've seen it on the sim and everything, and they, fortunately enough, they still have it on the sim, which is awesome to see. Yeah. But, um, you know, I would really lo love to race with the oak tree here. <laughs> it definitely, I think, does bring a new element and a new obstacle to right. the turn, which sure. I think now has kind of been eliminated. But yep. it's still... Even though the obstacle or the scenery is gone, the turn is still very tricky. Exactly, and it's a turn where if you're going to go off, you'll probably go off on the outside anyway. Yeah. So the tree wouldn't have come into uh, into, into and it's play. It's not very but forgiving. We kind of miss there. it. Those of us who've been here for a long time kind of miss it. Miss it being there, but it's one of the most important turns on the racetrack because it leads on to that long back straightaway. Absolutely, it's very the crucial, most crucial corner on this racetrack, and it's going to determine if you're going to get past or be past, or like if you're going to make a pass or get past. And it just really, that's like one of the first corners that we saw here last year as well as this year. It's like one of the main focus points of the turn. And you got to get that turn down. Otherwise, your whole lap is going to be screwed up. That exactly turn alone. Right. And then, of course, at the, at the end of that turn, you've got the roller coaster, yeah. that huge downhill plunge, setting up another important turn at Hawkman onto the front straight. Now, that's also a fun section, too, because you're going downhill and it's flat out going through the roller coaster as well. And that's a very fun section as well to be a part of. Jordan, before we start, I'm just looking at a message here from John Walsh in Race Control telling the drivers that because of the cooler conditions this morning, it's going to take time for the tires to warm up. And I mean, you're aware of that, and you've done a lot of this sort of racing, but is that something, you know, that could catch out a few people if they're not thinking? Sure, absolutely. I mean, we saw it in qualifying yesterday in the Formula Regionals event. I mean, we had two um, early uh, we had two early runs that went out, and we had some people had some misfortune, you know? We had some guys go straight off. We had two, one guy go off in the roller coaster and one guy go off in Oak Tree. And I think, I don't know if that's lack of experience, but that's also a lack of knowledge of what the track's offering to us. We're on cold tires, new tires as well. We don't know what the track condition's like. We don't know how it's rubbered in. We don't know what the temperature is and what the tires are going to get up to. So oh, most definitely that would be the case. And you could definitely see a lot of people, and interesting enough, we're going to see if any people get caught out in that effect. You can see the safety car descending down the roller coaster, coming down toward Hog Pen right now, and they will be coming onto the pit straightaway. And 
lot. The field will line up here on the front straight. Of course, all of our races, both the F4 US and the Formula Regional Americas races, start from a Formula One style standing start. The light gantries are set up. There are five red lights that come on at a one second interval. And then uh, theoretically, a random amount of time expires before those five lights are extinguished. And that's what uh, indicates to the drivers to drop the clutch and get to it. Wheel spin is an issue for you guys, not so much for these cars, right? Yeah, we have a lot more horsepower underneath our tires. So our engine. So right now it's kind of just kind of feathering the throttle, making sure you're minimizing as much wheel spin as you can, but also getting enough heat in the tires right here as we're seeing a lot of cars doing burnouts coming up to their starting grade. It's important to get as much heat in those rear tires so that way you minimize the wheel spin, get enough grip so you can accelerate off the line as best you can. The front row is set. The rest of this 26 car field coming into position as we see Noel Leon and Nico Christodoulou on the front row. Right behind them, Jason Alder and Justin Arsenault, one of Justin's best qualifying performances of the season. Here's the eight car of Chloe Chambers and the uh, 17 car of uh, Jose Andres Martinez. Uh, Chloe serving a penalty. Jose was asked to, uh, requested to start from the pit lane. Not quite sure why. Also at the back is the number 29 car of Eric Evans. Not quite sure why Eric is uh, starting from the pit lane. I didn't get that information ahead of time, but nonetheless, he will start from the pit lane as well. You can hear the refs coming up, and we are away, and a great start from Nico Christodoulou. In fact, both of the uh, Velocity Racing Development teammates got a great jump as uh, Nico's going to try to go around the outside of Noel Leone in the run down to the horseshoe. Uh, horseshoe. Leone is making that car as wide as he can, but it's too wide into the braking zone for the horseshoe turn. Leone is going to keep a nose ahead. Right behind it is Jason Alder with Nico Christodoulou right there on the outside. Now it looks like Alder might have just a bit of an advantage as they come through the kink there in turn two and then the sweeping NASCAR turn. They're still too wide, four second spot into the very tricky left hook. This is a turn where we've watched a lot of the, the drivers really have trouble getting the power down coming out of that and then into the snake, which is the little bit of uh, lower S's, if you will, as we've got a car stalled here on the pit lane, the 17 car of uh, Jose Andres Martinez, not able to get started, getting a push from his crew to try to get it underway. But Noel Leone leading through the climbing S's all the way up into Oak Tree Bend. And it looks like K-Rung Lee has gone off again at that very tricky spot. So K-Rung having a, an interesting start to his, uh, his race here. See a lot of guys getting very racy here going into Oak Tree. Very quick early in the race, boys. We got a long way to go. Yeah, so far everybody's finding their P's and Q's and heading down the back straightaway. As they're snaking their way, trying to break the draft. The draft's so important in this class. These cars are able to race a little closer because they don't have quite the aerodynamics of your Formula Regional cars. Indeed, you know, it's kind of more like a go-kart race. You almost kind of think of it as well. You got that huge draft that can kind of slipstream people right up against each other. But again, this is the longest straightaway, so a really good overtaking opportunity as they head up towards the roller coaster. Getting a great camera shot as they, you can see them plunging downhill as they make their way into the roller coaster, heading down toward the hog pit turn. As we see the 31 car of Chase, uh, Christian Weir on debut, making his first start with us. And Christian doing a great job staying with these front runners who are much more experienced. As we see the field come through, Matt Clark, the man who is chasing Noel Leone for the points championship, sets the fastest lap of the race. And I want to see what the progress is of uh, the uh, 39 car, yes, the uh, 39 car of Bryson Morris, who had to start at the back after bringing out that red flag. He's up to 15th already. Yeah, he was one of those drivers we expected to, to make his way through the field, and Jonathan, great observation, already up to 15th position. Yeah, Matt Clark's moved up to fourth place. Good start from him, too. But, yeah, keeping an eye on Ryan Sheehan, too. He started 13th. He's up to 9th. Uh, and Joseph Daniel to 11th place. But uh, yeah, keep an eye on, well, keep an eye on Morris uh, and see how he comes through because we know he's fast. At the front, it looks like Noel Leone maintaining his lead with the two uh, Velocity Racing Development teammates right behind him. Jason Alder taking over that second spot from his teammate, Nico Christodoulou. Jason trying to get his season back on track. After winning two of the first three races, he's been shut out of the podium for the last couple of weekends. So Jason looking to get things rolling once again. As Nico Christodoulou right there in third spot and then Matt Clark tucked right under his rear wing as these four have broken away just a little bit from the fifth place runner, Christian Weir. Good 
clean start, two distinct groups now. You can see from that shot just exactly how far they've pulled away from each other as they head down the back. Yeah, Lucas St. John in the 98 car for iCar Canada leading that second pack of cars with uh, Matt Christensen, Seth Foley, and Ryan Sheehan right behind him. Victor Anderson also part of that pack. Then Joseph Dinelli a little further off the back of that. He's got Gabriel Fonseca right on his rear wing. Look at Matt Clark challenging for that final step on the podium as he is right on the back of Pico Christodoulou as these drivers make their way out of the front straightaway and by our commentary position. Jason Alder ducks to the outside as they go by start finish. Now they're three wide heading down into the horseshoe turn as Noel wow. Leone in the Velocity Racing Development Sandwich and he gets swamped by both of them. And it looks like Christodoulou's got the, the advantage as they leave Horseshoe and head down toward NASCAR. Side by side coming into NASCAR, something's got to give. Left hook coming up and someone's going to get one if they're not lucky. Jason Alder was going to be able to get the lead away from him given an inside line going into three. Exactly, so Alder with that advantage now. Chris Dudulu slots into second with uh, Noel Leone back to third now. And of course he's got Matt Clark all over him. Noel Leone and Matt Clark battling for the points championship as we had a car go wide in the background but we're still racing. Tires are coming up to 10th here, so now you're getting those optimal pressures. So you see a lot of guys getting very confident with their race cars here as they're now starting to make moves. This five-way pack at the front has really put some distance between themselves and the rest of the field. It was almost three seconds at start finish, and it's growing at every move. As we can see, Noel Leon trying to work his way around the second place, Nico Christodoulou, as they approach the Oak Tree Bend, and then on their way down the long back straightaway, Christian Weir, the 14-year-old on debut, right on the back of Matt Clark, the man who has won four races this season. Weir is really impressing me. Yeah, and Christian has been putting a lot of time in at the track as well. He's been having a lot of sim time as well as a lot of testing in both this car and a different series car. So you've seen him. He's had the seat time. He's been put in the work, and he's actually coming here on debut, showing to having a really good performance. Exactly right. The leaders work their way down the hill through the roller coaster. The TV camera does not do it justice. That is steeply downhill as they work their way through the hog pit turn and onto the front straightaway, passing the pit entrance. Bryson Morrison up to 13th now. So flying at the moment, Bryson. Really good start from him, and he really is pushing on. He's got Gabriel Fonseca in front of him now. It looks like we've got our first safety car of the, of the, uh, the race as we've got a car off course. We'll try to get information from race control as to who and where that might be. There's a 66 who is off track. That's the one who's off at the exit of 17, it looks like, for cross link. That's uh, Ryan Sheehan. We were just bragging on Ryan out of Horseshoe Bay, Texas, down in Johnny's uh, home country, as uh, he has got the car rolling. So with a little luck, he'll be able to get that car back onto the racetrack under his own power and save us having to uh, bring out a full course. We, we've already brought out the safety car, but he may avoid it. Uh, having to get a recovery vehicle there. Yeah, Ryan from my hometown, I know him well, and uh, he's been really pleased with his progress. This is his first season, of course, uh, and the last few races he's had, what, uh, he, well, he's consistently been in the points, which is what he wants out of his first season, but this is not what he wanted to start his weekend here at VIR. Sadly, the grass with a little morning dew still on it very early in the day here has uh, gotten him stuck. You can see the wheels spinning in the grass, so he will require some help. Uh, from one of the safety vehicles to get that car back underway. And unfortunately, he will go a lap down. So let's catch our breath and recoup just a yeah. bit <laughs> as we are about uh, 70 or seven minutes into this one. This is a replay, I think, of what happened. Well, that's a different car. Isn't yeah, that's yeah, one of the Jay Howard that's cars. That's the Jay Howard like. car, yeah. Yeah, that, that went off there at turn the four, left or hook. Turn yeah, five. Or turn five, exactly. That's a very tricky corner because that's a right-hand bend and it just continues to turn, but the exit catches up on you quickly. So unless you keep your eyes up and you're looking forward, that exit comes up on you, uh, just catches out on you, and next thing you know, you're high sign off the track and you're falling away from it. By process of elimination, when that is Seth Foley in the number four car, who was off there at turn number five. So he falls to the back. We'll see if he's gonna need some help getting back on the racetrack as well. So Nico Christodoulou came across the line as your leader with Jason Alder in second, Noel Leone in third spot. Uh, 
those three drivers all in the top four in the points. So the usual suspects at the front. Matt Clark, second in the points, right behind them in fourth. The great rookie Christian Weir doing a fantastic job to stay with those runners in the fifth spot. Lucas St. John set the fastest lap of the race from sixth. He was leading that second pack of cars and with clear air had the opportunity to set the fast lap of the race so far. Right behind him, Matt Christensen, a top five man in the points as well. And then Victor Anderson, the Swede in the number 20 car uh, in eighth spot. Joseph Dinelli in ninth. And Bryson Morris up to 10th the man, already, the man starting the, dead last in the field. The man hit the lottery with this yellow fly coming out here. Is This is probably like the perfect thing that he was asking for to get this yellow to kind of get the field bunched up again so he has a shot to get back to the front. Exactly right. That's a great, uh, great opportunity for him to close up to the back. And now he is you know, on the par with the leaders, and we know he's got the pace, uh, he's going to be a factor for this one. I always think, Jordan, in a, in a scene like this with such a big field, if you're in the mid-pack, it's one of the hardest things to do a restart because you've got to judge what the guys behind you are thinking, yep. but you've also got to go, hey, you can't wait around and go, I'll just take a time and get 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 up to speed. you got to go. Absolutely, and the worst thing you mentioned being in the mid-pack, too, where the restart zone is is where the cars are coming through right now, which is turn 17. It's right in the middle. The leader acceleration point could be anywhere between the entrance of turn 17 to the exit of turn 17. So Nico Christian Dulu has the opportunity to go whenever he feels like it. Yeah. And if you're in the mid-pack, it's so hard to get on the gas when you're in the middle of a corner, and especially if everyone's going ahead of you, because you come over the roller coaster, it's a drop down. Next thing you know, you come to the drop, everyone's already going. Yeah, you might be on it, but the guy in front and the other guy in front exactly. may not be. <laughs> it's, a, it's a cordial defect in that case, so yeah. it makes it so hard to pass down this long straightaway in the middle. But for Nico Christian Dulo, he's got to really time this right, because because this is such a long straightaway, it gives Jason Alder, Noel Leon, Matt Clark, and Christian Weir, the guys behind him, Plenty of straightaway speed to get a draft to potentially make a move going into turn one. So the points battle tightening up just a little bit if the race were to finish the way it is, and somehow I don't think that's going to be the case. Uh, that would give Nico uh, Christodoulou a bonus to be able to close in. He's 25 points back of Matt Clark right now as they run. Matt Clark uh, is eight and a half points behind Noel Leone. So uh, that uh, the top three very evenly pa packed. In fact, Jason Alder is only 14 points behind Nico Christodoulou. Matt Christensen a further 24 points back. So 75 points separate the top five drivers with 25 on offer for each race. Obviously, it's still mathematically possible for a whole number of drivers to work their way toward the front. We're missing Bijoy Garge this weekend. He did not take the start. He's sixth in the points. But Justin Arsenault, one of the ICAR Canada drivers, seventh. Arias Dubajan, who is racing in the F4 series this weekend, is currently eighth in the points. Rodrigo Gutierrez, unfortunately, not with us this weekend, is ninth. Hayden Bowlesby rounds out the top 10 in points in the 0-3 car. Bowlesby, unfortunately, has not come by start finish. So for whatever reason, his car is not in the field. Either that or he's got a transponder issue. You know, I did see him pull on the pit road and retire the car at one point after the first lap, so I don't know what the issue was, but a very unfortunate uh, circumstance for Hayden Bowlesby. The 66 car, Brian Sheehan being towed into the pit lane. I don't know if there's any damage to the car, but they're going to take him behind the wall, so apparently he will not be able to continue. Possibility that the car overheated while it was sitting there. I won't. Uh, I won't uh, guess what that might be. But uh, nonetheless, Ryan Sheehan will not be able to continue in this race. And assuming that the um, four car of Seth Foley has been recovered from the turn five area with a little luck, we should be able to go green next time. But beautiful but conditions for racing. Really is a lovely day. And it's even going to get any warmer, too, which is going to be even better. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, it, you know, considering that it's uh, it's late September in uh, uh, in Virginia, it could be beastly hot in this part of the country. But we're blessed with really uh, temperate uh, temperatures for this uh, part of the world. Uh, highs in the mid-70s. Uh, we've been here before when it's been uh, 80 and 90, 90 degrees where it's really tough. Last year was tough too when it was like in the dreaded heat almost felt like it was 100 degrees outside and it felt like 120 inside the cars. I'm sure it was yeah <laughs> absolutely and of course you've got multiple layers of Nomex on in yep. addition so uh, it, uh, it's one of those things where you lose a lot of water weight in one of these races Indeed. even though they're only 30 or 35 minutes long.
lights are still on the safety car, it looks like, so I think we're going to be going one more lap, it looks like. Yeah, because uh, he would have the lights off by this point if we were going to uh, if we going to go green this time. Bye. Race Control has asked him to uh, maintain his 60-mile-an-hour uh, pace. Sounds like they're going to send uh, some folks out to pick up a, a piece of debris at turn 10, which is uh, right in the middle of the climbing S's. So we'll see what that situation might be. Getting word from race control. They're hoping to be able to start next time by, but again, they're waiting on the recovery work of uh, the number four car of Seth Foley at turn number five. And there's about, what's right now we're at what, 10 minutes to go. So I would say by the time we get enough green, it's about close to four minutes for a pace lap, I'd say, or close to that. So I think you're gonna look around three, four laps left when we get back to green, potentially of racing. Yep. Got to check Bryson Morris' start to see how well he can get up there. He's in the points right now, yeah. having started at the back. He's got ahead of Gabriel Fonseca just before um, the safety car. So, uh, like I said, I'm on, I'm on Morris' watch. <laughs> <laughs> Bryson, a driver who has had great success at the uh, Lucas Oil Race Series, and uh, in fact, winning that series, I believe, if memory serves beating that uh, championship. He's got eight wins and three podiums after 12 rounds. So Bryson uh, showing great pace at Brainerd uh, as he came in uh, really uh, as an unknown quantity to all of us and just really set the world on fire. A third place in only his second race and then winning in only his third race in the car. He did have some sim time and a, and a little test time in the car prior to Brainerd, but still, that's a great performance for a driver in his first start. So uh, looking for great things from him this weekend. I asked him on the podium at Brainerd if he was going to be able to join us for the rest of the season. He said it was all up to funding, and apparently he found enough funding to uh, at least be with us for this race. Hopefully he can uh, join us in the season finale at Circuit of the Americas. Lights are out on the safety car, so we are uh, ready to go racing once again. The clock counts down to about eight and a half minutes, so it'll be about uh, seven minutes, seven and a half minutes when they take the green flag. That'll be enough for three laps at least, maybe four. Beautiful drone shots. It, it, this adds so much to the video coverage of these races, these great drone shots, able to see the uh, bird's eye view. Literally, you can hear the birds chirping in the background as the safety car approaching the roller coaster. He will now accelerate away from the field and turn it over to our leader, Nico Christodoulou, who is required to maintain safety car pace as he brings the field around for the restart. Field beginning to bunch up single file behind Christodoulou as he is approaching turn 17. That's where he, at his leisure, can drop the throttle whenever he wants to, but he has to get on it before he gets out of this final turn. Critical his teammate, restart Jason Alder, right on his rear wing. Critical re restart for the contenders, isn't that? The teammates get away just a little bit from the third place, Noel Leone. Matt Clark has got to run as he pops out to the outside of the leader as they make their way down toward the horseshoe. Here comes Jason Alder. He's going to try to go the long way around, and I think that may cost him a position because Noel Leon is going to try to stick his nose in there. Clark goes around the outside of Leon. They're still side by side, but Christodoulou maintains the position as they head through the Kinka down into NASCAR. Christodoulou still in the lead. Clark still in that four spot. He was not able to get around Noel Leon as they make it through the tricky left hook. Back into the snake they come. Seven minutes remaining on the race clock as they head up through the snake and heading toward the climbing S's, uphill through this entire section. Christodoulou, then Alder, then Leo, then McClark. McClark looking rook as though he's going to make a move down that back straight when they come out of Oak Tree. Great view from the drone. You really see just how much it winds. Matt Clark all over the back of Noel Leone. Leone having to drive just a little bit defensively. His job, obviously, is to keep Matt Clark behind him and extend his points lead to the extent that he can as these four make their way down the back straightaway. Didn't get the drive he wanted out of Oak Tree. He's lost a little bit of ground, actually. He 
bumped over the curbs. You can see him in the in the yellow and blue there in fourth place, right in the middle of your shot there. But he's not going to be able to do it before roller coaster. That's actually the rookie Christian Weir. Matt Clark actually has fallen back to like oh, the yeah, fifth or good sixth. Point. Good point. Yeah, Lucas St. John going side by side with him as they head down toward the roller coaster. The field just entering that section of track right now as they blast their way downhill and through the final turn called hog pen because there used to be a hog pen just on the outside <laughs> of that turn. Glad you explained. The 19th car of Noel Leone in that third spot. And then Christian Weir right behind him. Matt Clark is dropping down the order. Something must have happened to him. Yeah. It looked like he was wide as they approached uh, Oak Tree. And he may have gone off there. He has still not come by start finish. So that's a disaster for Matt Clark, the man second in the points. Yeah, that is a big bad uh, circumstance for him. Guess, especially with Noel you know, Leon where he is. And Alder leading the race. Oh, Alder goes wide, though. We'll see a lot of cars go wide there at the exit of NASCAR. That's easy. It's an easy corner to overdrive as they work their way through the left hook, then into the snake, beginning the uphill climb. The snake, of course, is flat even in these cars, but this is where it gets interesting as they begin the first of the climbing S's. Alder now at the point. Christodoulou in second, then Leon, and then right behind him, the rookie sensation. I've got a Morris update. He's up to eighth. Christian Weir battling for a podium in his first start as they come to the oak tree, the double apex right-hander. Yeah, I took notice of Christian when he was fastest in practice in the first practice and went, who is this kid? And he's proving it again. It's not, a, it's not just a one-off. Definitely not. Christian has been a kid who has come through the rankings as well. He's raced at the Audubon Country Club alongside with me. He's also done some karting as well. Got into some radical sports cars earlier this year as well. So he's kind of dipped his toe into some other stuff as um, getting it before getting into some formula car stuff, but now has done turned up the wicket in testing and has gotten into racing with F4. Clearly he's got the natural talent because uh, he has taken this like a duck to water. And mm. sadly, it looks like a safety car has been called for the second time this race as these drivers are off the pace coming down the hill with about three and a half minutes remaining. So this one is going to finish behind the safety car, ah. sadly. You don't have enough time to get a restart. And that's going to be a disappointment, I'm sure, for Nico Christodoulou, who might have had something for his teammate. Noel Leon has got to be happy that he is going to stay in that third spot. Great result for Jason Alder, though. Just what he needed to start the weekend. It will be a VRD 1-2. Yep. Yep. That'll be Alder's first win since yeah. the first round at Road Atlanta. He won the first two races, finished second and third. And he's been only on the podium once since then at Mid-Ohio. So uh, this will be a great shot in the arm for Jason Alder, a driver who wants to go to NASCAR. Uh, yeah. to, you know, he's, he's made it clear that uh, oval racing is where he wants to be. And uh, Jason, the INEX 2019 Semi-Pro Asphalt National Points Champion, that's Legends cars on paved ovals. And uh, so, He's certainly got the skill uh, in this uh, form of racing as well. I talked to him on the podium in Atlanta, and he, his road racing experience all came from karting. Really? This is his first real uh, open wheel experience in a full-size car, and uh, he has definitely put his championship back on track here with a first-place finish. Well, definitely one thing is for sure when you get into those little Legends cars on a paved oval, it teaches you a lot about the handling of a car and car control and just hanging out the rear end. So definitely comes into fruition and helps them out with, especially with these formula cars. Chloe Chambers did a good job. She got up to 17th, having started from the pit lane. Bryson Morris is going to uh, settle for eighth. Again, a great start from the back row. Victor Anderson, uh, one of his best finishes of the season in seventh spot. Disappointment for Justin Arsenault had a much higher start, but now finishes just outside the points in 11th. Chase Gardner, likewise, he dropped down to 14. Yeah, this will match Victor Anderson's best finish of the season. He's had a, a seventh at Road America, a couple of tenths and a ninth at Brainerd. So uh, this will be a great uh, shot in the arm for the Swedish driver. Gabriel Fonseca in the 76, in the ninth spot, and Joseph Tonelli in the final points paying position in the number 25 car for Crosslink Kiwi Motorsport. Mm -hmm. 
Well, John, you mentioned that Chase Gardner and uh, Chloe Chambers, you know, they started in the back, kind of made their way up to the front, but then had the, like, the kind of race that they wanted, I would say. But, you know, looking at the times as well, you're looking at the grid for race two, they're going to be with inside the top five, top six. Yeah, good point, and uh, yeah, that Luke, makes a big difference in that. Lucas St. John will start on the pole in race two. Christian Weir will start alongside him. Matt Christensen and Nico Christodoulou in row two, Chase Gardner and Chloe Chambers in row three, with Jason Alder, the winner, back in uh, row four alongside Matt Clark. Eric Evans and Noel Leone will be your top ten. Again, these results all unofficial, but based on the lap times that we see here on our scoring monitor, that'll be your rundown for race number two coming up uh, right after the lunch break. It just shows how important it is that even if you're down in the race or starting in the back, that, hey, the race isn't over. You still got to put in the flyer because you got two more races left this weekend that still have opportunities to go up to the front and get a win. Exactly right. So we're going to get that checkered flag fairly quickly. You can see the crew of the 19 car of Noel Leone packing up, getting ready to head back to the paddock area. They'll have a bit of a respite uh, as we'll be back for the second race. Uh, scheduled to take the green flag at 125 this afternoon, but that'll be after our special pre-race ceremonies, which will be covered on the live stream as we honor the late, great Andy Scriven, the designer of this race car, who uh, unfortunately passed away back in 2017 after a bicycling accident. We'll talk more about uh, Andy, but these VIR races every year are always the Andy Scriven Memorial as we memorialize uh, a great man, a great uh, character in the paddock and uh, his to work in the design of this car and about 75% of the design of the F uh, Formula Regional car as well prior to his untimely death. But we'll talk more about Andy later on, but the checkered flag flies and makes it official. Jason Alder, your winner. His teammate, Nico Christodoulou in second. Noel Leone, the points leader, keeping uh, his points lead, I'm guessing, uh, over Christian Weir, the rookie, as uh, we've been uh, talking him up the entire uh, race in the finishing in the fourth spot. Lucas St. John, a great finish for him. That's his best finish of the season by far. He's at a 10th and an eighth. So that's a fifth place finish for the Canadian driver from uh, Quebec. Matt Christensen, Victor Anderson, Bryson Morris from dead last, Gabriel Fonseca and Joseph Dinelli in the points paying positions. Lucas St. John's teammate, Justin Arsenault yes. finishes 11th, Artie Flores at 12th, Will Edwards, a great finish in 13th. Chase Gardner and Jake Bonilla rounding out the top 15. He's on his way. I'm going to head down to the podium, Jonathan. I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, John. Yes, and thank you, Jordan. Um, how do you feel, Jordan, before you go uh, about your race coming up? I mean, I feel like we have a really good shot, as just about as anybody in this race, uh, to get a win. But I feel like our car as well has been able to progress uh, tremendously over the weekend. You know, we unloaded off the truck very well, but I think as over the practice sessions and going into qualifying, we were able to put down a very good flyer, just two tenths behind Josh Carr. But I feel like as well, we got a good enough car that's going to be able to contend and hang with him throughout the course of the race. Well, good. I'm looking forward to that. Perfect conditions for racing. Go, absolutely. Go send it. Will do. Absolutely. Listen to Jordan Missick. He'll be in the next race uh, for uh, the single seaters. That's the FR feature race one. Uh, and a lot going on the championship there as, as well. And there's some very exciting racing from our FR. Let's take a look at the highlights then of our race. And he got off to a good start. It was a really good start from both Alda and Christodoulou at the start. Noel Leone tried to hold on to that top four. We did have a couple of spinners and a few men that went off. And then it started to heat up nicely. Christodoulou then getting in trouble against Alda. Jason Alda picking up the lead in a group of five, including Christian Weir, the youngster coming through. Then it was a VRD, one, two, as Alder and Christodoulou went head to head and they've been doing that a lot this season. In the mix though was still Noel Leone and Christian Weir. But we finished under safety, which meant a one, two for VRD. So as we look high above the Virginia International Raceway, we hope to go down and join them down for a quick interview at the end there. John have been heading down to the podium, but a good start. It's a shame, almost a shame when you finish onto safety cars, but uh, that's the way it goes sometimes, and you can't uh, judge what's going to happen in a race. And of course, this is all a learning experience for these guys. These are kids. These are 16-year-olds, really, uh, mostly, and they are learning their craft. But.
the prize is a big one. This a chance to win super license points and be noticed perhaps for the road to Italy. So many great guys have come through F4. Uh, Cameron Das, for example, racing in Europe right now, winning in Formula Euro, uh, Euros at the moment. Um, so many others, uh, Kyle Kirkwood leading in, uh, in the lights at the moment. He too came through. Dakota Dickerson, a great champion from this series. So into the pits they come. Two more races to come. And so the key to this race is to come into that pit, see your team manager and know that the car is a -O. You might make a few adjustments. You just don't want damage to the car, although they do have spares, of course. But uh, what you don't want is uh, to have to work around the clock to get ready for race two. There's Jason Alder, great character, great kid. You heard me talk to him at the start of the race. And he is, yeah, tickled pink with that one. He said, I'm just going to go out there and do it. And he did. Exactly that. As John was saying, he won at Road Atlanta at the beginning of the season, but he's been there or thereabouts. He just hasn't had the run of wins. And so it's nice to see him back winning again. And he is very much in contention. And there's Dan, his team manager, greeting him. Dan Mitchell, of course, from VRD. And definitely a good judge of talent, Hunter Yaney. Um, of course, one of his protégés and another man who's now gone to FIA F3. Let's head down to Jason Alder. He's now with John Fippin. Jason Alder, it's been a long time coming since your wins at Atlanta. Third win on the season. You've got to be pleased after a great battle with your teammate. Oh, yeah, it's been an incredible race for sure. I'm glad we could bring home a first and second for VRD. It's good for the points. It's good for us. It's good for the team. So it was a great race overall. How do you feel about race number two coming up? I'm excited. I think we have a little bit of work to do starting from a little bit further back than this race, but that's where the fun comes from, from you know, battling with other drivers. It's a lot of good racing that we put on, so I'm really excited to get back into it. Great job, Jason. Johnny, a three-time winner on the season.